Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of Retina Roundup. This is Dr. Anusha, fellow of Vitreo Retina and Ocular Oncology. I will be taking you through top 6 articles of this month. I would like to start this episode with a study on inverted ILM flap coverage with autologous blood technique after air fluid exchange and silicone oil tamponade for extensive macular hole retinal detachment in highly myopic eyes by Jivai Tao et al. It is a retrospective case series where 18 patients with macular hole RD extending beyond equator had undergone pars vitrectomy with autologous blood serum assisted ILM flap technique. Successful anatomic closure of macular hole retinal reattachment with clinically significant change in visual acuity was noted by 6 months providing an option for treatment of extensive macular hole associated retinal detachments. The next study is on fluid aspiration from intraretinal cysts for refractory diabetic macular edema by Ishikawa et al. In this study, 8 patients with refractory CME underwent intraretinal cyst fluid aspiration using 38 gauge subretinal infusion needle during pars vitrectomy. Clinically significant improvement was noted in BCVA and central retinal thickness on OCT by the end of 12 months, thereby concluding that Aspiration of intraretinal cyst fluid may be a treatment option for refractory CME. Coming to our next study where Saker et al. studied differential expression of sex steroid receptors in the choroid which was found to align with sex prevalence of central serous retinopathy across different ages. Presence and distribution of androgen, estrogen and progesterone receptors in the choroidal endothelium and stroma were studied in enucleated eyes of both genders across different age groups. Androgen receptor was found to be more abundant in younger men and progesterone and estrogen receptors were found to be sparser in premenopausal women. This correlates to the different prevalence patterns of central serous chorioretinopathy between the two genders. In the next article, Grace et al. attempt to elucidate the latest therapeutic options for geographical atrophy in late age related macular degeneration with a special emphasis on optogenetics. More than half of all the patients with late AMD have geographic atrophy. Recent advances include approval of intravitreally administered therapeutics namely pexetocoplan and avacin captat pegol which are inhibitors of complement C3 and C5 respectively. They have shown to retard the rate of enlargement of the area of atrophy. Optogenetics is a novel therapeutic field aimed at restoring lost vision to a certain degree. It involves imparting light sensitivity to the surviving inner retinal layers in an atrophic area, thereby rescuing visual function. This article discusses about the suitability of optogenetic therapeutic sensors in different target cells in preclinical models and considers the advantages and disadvantages of different routes of administration of therapeutic vectors. For the next article today, Thibaud Mathis et al. studied a possible association between dopamine receptor agonists and the development of neovascular AMD. Dopamine receptor agonists like liquidopa and carbidopa have been shown to inhibit choroidal neovascularization independent of nigrostriatal pathway lesions and thereby confer protection against development of neovascular AMD in animal studies. The same effect was demonstrated in a retrospective French cohort of 2000 patients with neovascular AMD where patients on dopamine agonists for the treatment of underlying Parkinson's disease had a delayed age of onset of AMD and a reduced need for anti vegf therapy. The final article being discussed today is about the occurrence of retinal tear and detachment following cataract surgery in eyes with the previous history of treated phakic retinal tears. Of more than 12,000 phakic eyes with a history of having received treatment for retinal tears, 1039 eyes underwent a subsequent cataract extraction out of which 713 eyes of 616 patients were included in this study. Over an approximate fall off period of 3 years, the overall incidence of retinal tears and retinal detachments was 2.9% and 4.3% with a one-year instance of 2.2% and 3.4% respectively, concluding that 
there was a high incidence of post surgery retinal tears and retinal detachment leading to decline in vision the observed risk factors for the same were younger age male gender and a shorter interval between the initial retinal treatment and cataract surgery this concludes this month's retina roundup we will be back next month with more interesting articles and studies thank you